All right, YouTube, what is going on? I feel like it's been a hot minute, but I've actually been up to date with the vlog. So we're here and we're gonna do a training session. I've got my man, Dan, behind the camera as well, so he's helped me out today. He's trying to do it yourself, a bit fucking annoying. So we are just under two weeks out uh, from the first show of the season. So Alicante, Spain, Poland, and Romania. So. I feel good today, checked in, got same food again today as I have done over the weekend. So I'll put some check-in pictures up on the screen now. Um, pretty much feedback today is we're gonna be checking in pretty much on a regular basis with Cam almost every other day now. Um, cardio is completely out. We're here now to, we're dropping the fatigue, we're dropping the stress now, and we're starting to bring the body back to life good amount of food going in. I had a bagel pre-workout, had some dates, so we're fucking good to go. And I'm just gonna throw some tips and tricks out there today, guys, because I know training footage can be pretty fucking boring, so I'll run you kind of through training at just under two weeks out, life, what's going, in my head, going on in my thoughts and stuff like that, and we'll just take it from there. I'll always start with, because we're doing, I should tell you what we're doing. We're doing chest, delts, and arms. It's Monday, that's what we do every Monday. <laughs> For the last two years almost. Um, so I'll always warm up with like a fly variation, just to really open up the chest. Just get a good contraction. The idea now is that like, I just don't want to get injured. Like I'm the leanest I've ever been. We just want to prevent injury. So I'll still take movements till failure this week, um, but I won't be, like going any lower than six reps. So I'll do first sets, normally eight to 10 reps. And then depending on what we're doing, um, I'll do like anything from a 10 to 20 rep range on the second set. I don't normally do three sets of things. So yeah, let's go do incline that you've seen probably for the last two years. It's actually, um, it's really quiet in here today as well. We said that um, driving over, it's actually really quiet, which is quite nice. Normally there's this fucking horrible traffic. It's actually not too bad. So. Still the hardest part about training here. Ugh. Ugh, finding the weights. I think the biggest thing that gets like, maybe not nowadays because there's good content out there, but everyone thinks when you get in the last week or the last couple of weeks of contest prep is that so much changes. Training never fucking changes. The food doesn't fucking change, like nothing changes. Like if you look good now, don't change anything. Like when people think, like, oh, taking out sweeteners or fucking switching broccoli for asparagus and all this sort of stuff. The truth is if your gut health's good, you look good, then the truth is you should just be able to put a fucking spray tan on and get on stage. So you're honestly over like, even when we're away, when we're vlogging, when we're away, you're gonna see the same foods, the same things like that. Maybe less food on some days, more food on other days. That's literally it guys. A little bit of water manipulation and that's it. Uh, Spain, we're doing Alicante. Uh, then a week later, we're doing Poland. I don't know the name of the Poland one. Um, and then we're doing the uh, Romania one, which is kind of like the bigger, the biggest one uh, of the three. So yeah, so it's, we we picked the shows because obviously like I'm an amateur, but Steph's a pro. So I'll be on the day before. So I'll do it Saturday, and then she does this pro show on the Sunday. Um, so yeah, because obviously every show is different. Like some will run different classes. Some might not even have like classic physique. They might not even have bikini or they might not have open bodybuilding. So 
It depends on the like the organizer and how they organize their show, really. But yeah, we've we've both been to Alicante. Uh, I did Alicante two years ago, uh, so like we kind of know the town and stuff like that. So it's a nice show to get our feet warmed up for. It's all right, guys. We're still weak as shit, even though we feel all right. <laughs> ah. Got it, bud. You'll notice as well, like um, everything we do, like always doing these kind of warm up sets, these kind of priming sets. So like just slowly building up to that working weight. Like this is the benefit of obviously tracking your lifts. Like I track my lifts all year round. So you know what your working weight is and stuff like that. So you kind of just slowly warming up and there's no real set ranges or sets. It's just going off feel. But just getting the pecs used to this movement, vice versa, getting the shoulder used to that movement, and then going in for that working set. So, yeah, that's literally it. I'm very old school, guys, when it comes to like training. Um, yeah, we have a lot of science nowadays, which is amazing, um, but it does sadly get hard work and a bit of bro, bro science, bro bodybuilding does get overlooked because of all the fancy shit out there. Um, and I think it can paralyze people. People try and be too perfect with their training, too perfect with their nutrition, hitting their macros, working out what steps they're doing to the absolute second. Like, the truth is, is that doing the basics, a fucking chest press will grow your chest. Obviously on a Smith machine, a little bit better because you're safer. And it's, you don't have to worry about stabilizing. So yeah, a little bit of science there. But at the end of the day, it's a chest press. We want to fucking like, move a lot of weight hard work and consistency like don't get i don't know simple works and yeah like bodybuilding is very whoever can be the boring and the longest enjoys the shit will look the best it's that simple <sighs> too heavy. <laughs> it's like, I promise I'm stronger than that. <laughs> but that's all right. Six, seven reps for that first set. It'll still be taken to failure at the end of the day. I physically can't contract the chest to move it up. So that's the most important thing. I'll always find like, when the leaner you get, you'll find certain body parts get a little bit weaker as well, faster than others. Everyone's different, so for me, pushing movements, so like chest, delts, they'll be like the weakest movements for me, just cause like, they are quite, kind of quote unquote my weaker areas. Legs kind of stay quite strong, back kind of stays quite strong. Um, 
But yeah, that's literally it. And you'll find that these weaker areas, when you start depleting, they'll get flatter quickly as well. So we know it's like when I like sent pictures over to Cam the other day, when I was like, I dropped like three kilos last week. You can see my chest, my arms and my shoulders just deflated, but my legs still kind of look quite, quite full sort of thing. So it's just genetics where you're dominant. That's all it is really. little cheeky tip on the chest press just think everything just want to keep locked down hips and glutes locked down feet shoulder blades you almost want to like squeeze the bench little arch in that lower back and then honestly elbows slightly tucked in so you're almost scooping the weight up so you scoop the chest instead of letting the elbows flare so it's that scoop and honestly like I like to touch my chest because just I want to get that stretch but you don't have to so as long as you get a good stretch at the bottom that's all that matters This is the hardest thing about prep, like two weeks out, just under two weeks out, is that I've always, I love training before anything else. So when your performance starts to drop and when you're like, your legs are heavy and when you're fucking tired, you're sleeping shit, like it's kind of, it sounds, it's almost like counterproductive to what you know, because your job's to get strong and build muscle. So when you're doing, this and it's lighter and you know you can move more weight you're like psychologically it's quite hard but it's just the acceptance process of this is the process in order to bring condition because the muscles not going anywhere like at the end of the day I'm assisted so it's like muscles fucking not going anywhere um, it's just that energy it's that it's honestly it's just body fat low levels of body fat this level of body fat not fucking sustainable so don't compare yourself or look at athletes and things like that and think that's how they live every fucking day it's not like you peak for the 100 meter final at the olympics it's going to take you four years to peak and be the fastest <laughs> it's going to take you four years to be the fastest you don't need to be the fastest next week in a year's time two years time you need to be the fastest four years time so peak for that day that's it focus Shoulder press is kind of the same as your uh, your chest press, guys. Like same kind of like concept. Feet locked down, hips and glutes. Depends on the machine, but I do like to lean back a little bit. So like just because of like shoulder mobility and angles, I don't believe pressing like dead vertically is very healthy for the shoulder. So a little bit of a let lent back ever so slightly just feels a bit better. I think that's the like. Training isn't like, sit like this, do this, do that. It's a lot of it, it's like everyone's digestion, biomechanics, everything like that is very unique to you. So just because I tell a client to do something, I want them to send me videos so I can look at it. So I can be like, oh, actually, like your shoulder doesn't look very comfortable there. Maybe just try and slide back a little bit more. It might feel a bit better. Do you feel a better connection with the, with the shoulder that way? Does it feel more comfortable in that position? Yeah, it does actually, perfect, run it like that. There isn't like, again, 
kind of comes up as you said earlier. There's no real stop, like just stop trying to be perfect just because of a handbook or what some fucking influencer tells you or vice versa. Some fucking jack bodybuilder. The nice thing about this kind of like, uh, gone. The nice thing about this, <laughs> nice thing about prime machinery is that you've got the three loading points. <coughs> so obviously if we're loading it straight in the middle, the tension's kind of always gonna be there. So obviously what I've liked to do a little bit deeper into this diet is just split the load a little bit more. So again, when we kind of press up the light or vice versa, when we come down, it's gonna be a little bit lighter here but then on the press, it'll slowly get heavier because that top load. So it just takes a little bit more out of kind of that bottom range, just feels a little bit better, but yet you're still moving the same kind of technical weight. So you're just changing the loading point of where the weight kicks in. And because I'm a little bit weaker on this, I'll probably run just two straight sets eight to 15 range, just see what I can get on the first one and then gauge, gauge for the second. The hardest thing about like the last couple of weeks in prep, especially when you're OCD and fucking routine as much as me, is that there isn't really a plan. Like we have data, we have the body condition that we need, but there's no real do this tomorrow, do this the next day, do that the next day. It's all about assessing on a day-to-day -day basis how the body's responding, how it's looking, how it's feeling, and then making those changes like today. I prepared my food because we were, normally we go back to baseline. So I was like, when I checked in, he was like, oh, we're actually gonna eat a little bit more food today, same as what we did on the weekend kind of thing. So I was like, oh, fuck, now I gotta cook more rice when I get home, do you know what I mean? So, um, so I had to do that this morning. So a lot of it is just like, just adapting of how you go and like making sure definitely for me is that I'm reducing workload. So reducing client, like uh, coaching inquiry calls, just reducing kind of the unnecessary workload that I could put on myself, but there's no need to, especially over the next kind of four to five weeks. And the biggest reason why people don't look good in a prep is cortisol, so stress levels, and they're not relaxed enough. They're not letting their body chill. It's as simple as, so you need to let the body nice and relaxed then you'll feel relaxed mentally and your body will respond. Typical, mind, body, soul, guys. Always remember that. What category are you saying? Same category as Yeah, classic, yeah. Just because I did, I did two junior shows and I did like men's physique, so I was like board shorts like that. And like my legs are like, even when I was younger, I was like, my legs were good. And I was like, fuck this, I want to get my legs out, sort of thing. And I just like the look of it. I think like if I look at my body, Proportions, I'm quite nice, like insertions of muscles. I just like, again, like from 2022, I'll probably be five kilos up, five, six kilos up this year. So like 18 month off season, five, six kilos of growth or stage weight, I should say. Um, so yeah, give me another 18 months again, if I can do that again. I, I think that's, again, that's what like, that's the vision I have with Cam, I said to him this morning. And that's what a lot of people ask me, like, what's the plan after the shows? Like, well, the truth is I'm just focused on the shows right now. But afterwards, obviously, we've got a nice bit of downtime. Obviously, like, I've got a lot of client photo shoots, take a little bit of downtime, get healthy, go into a health phase, get all my blood work done. And then we start an 18 month off season. And then we're, if anyone knows, hashtag pro worthy 2026. So the goal is to bring a pro-worthy physique for 2026. And that's it, man, that's it. I'm just falling in love with this shit more and more every day.
flying through this. We'll go, we'll go back into the other room. And we'll get that high clavicle fly. Your area has to be clean. I know, I thought so. <laughs> you know what I can't stand? When people moan about, <coughs> when people moan that they can't find the equipment in the gym. Just bring your own. It's so simple. So simple. Track your lifts, have everything here for you. If I can get them. I want some cuffs. There we go, see? Amazon's famous. 20 quid, guys, 20 quid. Really getting that upper chest. It's just a nice movement. You can use, obviously, cuffs, or you can use kind of D handles. And like, all you want to do, you can kind of use this like a press. Just think about the elbow driving across kind of your collarbone line. And until you feel like a bite, so you'll feel like a stretch, and then like a little bite. And then you just want to stay in that range there. So again, we'll do like two sets, 10 to 15 reps, and yeah. <laughs> job, job fucking done. That's the thing, guys. Fucking training isn't rocket science. Train hard, take the muscle till failure. Stretch, squeeze. That's all you fucking need to do, and then just do it for years. And eventually, you'll get some muscle. When you do this, bring your elbows together. Instead of bringing the hands, if you bring your hands together, the muscle's still real long. We want to shorten that muscle. So bring the elbows together, not the hands together. We're going for single arm, cuffed, laterals, two sets, 10 to 15 each arm. What I like to do with this one, obviously hold on for stability, but then lean out. So you can see my shoulder would naturally kind of finish here. But what I'm gonna do is just leaning out just allows us to get a little bit more of a stretch into that side delt. And I like to kind of hold a D handle at the same time, because it kind of feels like I can push my fist away, like I've got dumbbells. I know, bit sciencey, but it's not really.
Oh. The reality of getting lean, guys. The truth is, the only reason I actually booked this, this video is that I knew on weekends I have my high days. And actually, it's nice to have another high day. Because honestly, I knew that my energy and like my personality just to talk would be there because over the last week, like I'm, I'm a big introvert and I just go into a little hole, do my work, energy levels come down and I just want to stay in my little cocoon. Um, so yeah, that's the only reason you're fucking getting a training video to be honest with you. Otherwise you'd get fucking just an Instagram clip. So. <laughs> That's the truth really behind it all, to be honest. So I enjoy content. Um, and like I was saying to Dan, like as a coach, like our job is content, but it sometimes can be a bit of a mind fuck as well. Like especially with this world we live in, you sometimes always think you're behind or you're never good enough, but you just need to fucking forget because honestly, like living in Dubai and Dan, will t Dan behind the camera will say this as well. Like, living in Dubai, you realize that like, fucking 99% of the shit that people post is fucking bullshit anyway. And it's, it's not real. Okay. This exercise, there isn't a best exercise, but this is the best exercise. Um, overhead, kind of narrow stance, easy bar curls. Easy bar curls? Easy bar extensions. I honestly think this has been one of the best movements for my tricep development. So again, we'll do one warm up set just because we've done a lot of pushing. I'll do a warm up set and then we'll jump straight into it. We'll do two working sets, 10 to 15 reps again. The best thing to do is if you've got a training partner, it does help with this one. Otherwise, yeah. You look like a fucking fish flapping around. With this, guys, get like a bicep curl at the bottom. I want you to get a full stretch in that tricep at the bottom. So when you're here, do bicep curl. Squeeze the bicep. Relax the shoulder blades back and down into the bench. Squeeze the triceps away. Bicep curls, squeeze, stretch the triceps. And then try and find the rack. There we go. <laughs> strength. We'll just change it around. We'll just do single arm and we'll just do it as a bit of a muscle round. We'll get this super set in. I think we'll just do seven machine. We'll just get a rope, just get a set of dumbbells. We'll just bust it out like that. A bit easier. We'll go into the, the corner over there. Get away from humans. Oh, 
always use two ropes or one big one. Just the lines of the shoulders a little bit better. Make sure with this, guys. It's a nice super set. Just using the two ropes just allows our shoulders to be more here instead of that little narrow rope closing the shoulders in. Just going to align with those triceps a little bit better. Same big stretch, bicep curl, squeeze. Biggest thing again, guys, don't have to go heavy with biceps. Go heavy, of course, I'm not saying fucking go light, but they don't have to be as heavy as you think, all right? Drop the weight, stretch, squeeze. the workout complete we are running a little bit late so we're gonna go to the posing studio for 15 minutes John's gonna jump on zoom we're gonna hit some posing rounds so let's go get it Yeah, we're kind of done. We actually pull cardio now just because of fucking the dare, pretty much. Um, yeah, so now we just just got a third day of high food again, which is nice. So yeah, we're pretty much reversing into this now. Let's 
So, yeah. You do the same this way. Okay. How'd you find the uh, how'd you find the Olympia? I met my good fucking phenomenal. Man. So good. Not too bad, I had two high days, and we're doing another high day today, so I'll start getting fuller and fuller, I think, throughout the next week.
Not really. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just a bit more. No. No, no work my left. No. Just more weight here. Yeah, here. Okay, yeah. Keep getting better. Oh, it's nice just to like, because I know this is what I have to get used to when I'm like eating a bit more as well. It's like the more I pose, the better I look, always. I just get, yeah, so it's just like, that's, yeah, that's, that was pretty much my feedback because so I did check ins this morning. I was posing and I was fucking tense and it was hurting. I was like, fuck this. So I was like, so that's when we look like, run the same food today. Just freshen up again, get a bit fuller. Because it's like, I was, I was fresh but I wasn't, there was no fullness. Um, so yeah, so, but yeah, it's just check ins. Yeah, that's the thing. So, because I think my legs get leaner, quicker, so they're the first thing to flatten off. Yeah. Yeah, they can be. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's the nice thing now, because obviously now we're backing off, so there's no cardio now. Which, and the baseline food's probably going to go up tomorrow. So. So it's just over the next kind of week and a half now, it's just slowly just bring it back to life. So Yeah, yeah. Even today, like it's just nice to be able to like get a fucking like, oh that's a pump by this. <laughs> <laughs> so no, mate, mate legend, you're a superstar bro. Thanks man. Appreciate it. I'll see you. I'll see, yeah, I'll see you Wednesday, man. Thank you, bud. All right, guys, that is the session posing wrapped up. Um, I'm posing post-workout every session, so five times a week. Cannot stress the importance of posing, just so you feel confident on the stage and 
that you can really display the best you. Um, but yeah, guys, we are here. I feel good. I'm excited. Um, yeah, I feel very good. I'm very happy, very content. So I'm just taking every day as it comes right now and enjoying the process. So I love you and leave you, and I'll see you in the next one.